Thanks for watching. Go ahead and click the subscribe button and the bell icon so you get notified of each new video as it comes out. Hi everybody, I'm JJ Johnson. You're watching Reality Survival. And today we have a really cool knife to talk about. Uh, this knife is from Holtzman's Gorilla Survival. And um, he contacted me a while back and said, hey man, I'm, I'm developing this new knife. I don't have any yet. Uh, but I was wondering if you could take a look at them and see what you think. And so uh, we went back and forth several times and he sent some out. And so this is it. And so uh, there's two of them that I'm going to show you. One, we're just going to go over one today. I'll do another video on the second one. Um, but this is the knife. This is called the Silverback. And it is a uh, full tang knife with D2 steel. Um, it is eight and a half inches long and it is, the blade is four inches long. The handle is four and a half. And I will tell you right off the beginning, um, one of the things that I really like about this knife, it, 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 is, it is really, really comfortable in your hand. So just working with it uh, just around the house. And stuff like that here later in the video uh, I'm gonna have some some video of just you know cutting some stuff and doing some feather sticks and you know chopping stuff up and just kind of using it and cutting with it and all that kind of stuff so you'll see that uh, here at the end of the video um, I'm not sure that we would call it necessarily like a full field review but sort of a barn review <laughs> I guess because uh, we're in the middle of the winter time here and uh, the weather and wind and everything's just been nuts but um, this is this is a nice knife this is this is a nice knife and if if you can I don't know if you can really tell uh, on here I'll move my fat head out of the way but the handle is has a has a, a very nice contour to it a very nice palm swell and it's a G10 uh, scales are, are what's on it. Uh, it also has a, a nice kind of uh, finger groove kind of built into it. And then it's kind of got some, some little thumb divots down in here. And man, the, the design work on the handle alone is the, the big winning thing on this knife. I've reviewed a lot of knives over the years. I've used tons and tons of knives, even stuff that I haven't done reviews on, and I am going to tell you that this is probably in the top one or two knives as far as comfort goes in the hand. Um, it makes the SE4 feel like, like you're just holding a club or something. I mean, it's way more comfortable. Um, and that's important for hard use knives. If you're gonna do something, if you're gonna have a knife and you're gonna be using it a lot and all that kind of stuff, you want a knife that feels really good in your hand. And um, it just gives you a better grip and all that kind of stuff. So, so this is, is impressive. Now, the funny thing is, is that I'm talking about the, the handle more than I'm talking about the knife itself. And, um, you know, the, the rest of the knife is actually nothing um, to sneeze at. I mean, it, it's actually a very, very nice blade. I really like D2 blades. Um, as you can see, you've got a little lanyard hole down here. Um, you've got what I what I would call a saber grind. Um, and you can see, you know, it's basically the same on both sides there. Um, then you've got a drop point, um, you know, on the, on the spine there. And it does taper just a little bit, um, you know, at this at this front edge as well. Not a lot, but a little bit. Uh, I'm guessing that the that the thickness is probably right about three sixteenths. Um, I haven't measured it, but that's what it that's what it looks and feels like to me. Um, he's got a little got a little gorilla emblem on the side there. I don't know if you can see that. Let me. There we go. So that's kind of cool. It's got his little logo in there. Um, and like I said, it's D2 steel. It's, it is Rockwell uh, hardness treated to uh, about 60, maybe 60, just a little, little, little north of 60. Um, 
and so I did the I did the cutting that you're going to see here in a, a, a minute, um, and I was concerned when I heard uh, the hardness with the the D2 steel that maybe it would be hard to sharpen, but it wasn't. Uh, after I did the review, I I uh, kind of touched it back up on a uh, a whetstone and it was actually very easy to sharpen still and so i was i was surprised by that combination because a lot of times you get that hardness up too high and it, and it starts to uh, to get a little bit harder to sharpen but this was actually very easy to sharpen and uh, it, it held its edge very very well i didn't even need to sharpen it um, afterwards i just did it just because i wanted to see you know how it was to work with because that's one of the things if an, if a knife's too hard to sharpen um, then it's just it's not a great knife to have as a work knife because you need to sharpen it regularly you know what I mean um, so anyhow uh, super impressed super impressed with the knife um, with that we'll go ahead and and uh, get up there and take a look at the uh, at the stuff in the barn and and I'll, and I'll try to uh, roll in some close-ups uh, of the blade so you can get a little better picture of it uh, at the at the very end of the video as well um, just to just kind of show you how, how how much of a nice looking knife this is uh, let me see here if I can think of anything oh I know what else I need to talk to you about holy cow <laughs> the sheath the sheath is awesome too okay so the sheath is a kydex sheath um, geez, can't believe I almost forgot that. We, we have a, it's about a three and a half inch ferro rod that comes with it. And um, it's got a G10 scale or G10 handle on it also. And this uh, ferro rod is, is, is a nice one. It's, some ferro rods are really hard and they put off really fine sparks you know this one is a softer ferro rod and it puts off the big like chunky sparks that when they hit then they'll kind of flame up on their own and it's actually really good for starting fires um it, it doesn't make as a pretty of a sh as a show as some of the other ferro rods but it actually starts fires uh, a little better so that's kind of cool and he's got the loop on the side here so that you can just stick that in there and uh, he does uh, supply some paracord with that if you want to make a little lanyard. The other cool thing is he got, he's got is he has a little scraper. And uh, see so if we can get that to focus. And the scraper uh, has you know 90 degree edges on all sides of it. It's a it's like a high high carbon steel kind of scraper or whatever. Um, I assume it's high carbon steel. I'm not sure actually, but anyhow. Uh, it works very well for scraping the fire, the, the ferro rod, um, and that has a nice little sheath that for the scraper that, that locks on the outside of the knife sheath. So that's pretty cool. Um, really well thought out design. So the next thing is on the back here, we have basically like your tech lock. Um, it's got the spring loaded clip. I'm not sure if it's the actual tech lock brand, but that's kind of what it looks like. And the cool part about this is, is that you can, he supplies a, uh, an Allen wrench so you can turn this to do vertical carry or like a ranger carry like that. And, uh, you know, the knife goes in really positively, you know, it clicks in good and it's, it's really just a, you know, it's a pretty good, pretty good thing there. Um, you hear just a touch, just a little bit of movement, but it's it's locked in there pretty good. It's not going to come out, um, and it's pretty solid, pretty solid deal. Now let me show you what the the packaging looks like uh, when when it came in in the mail. You get this kind of a gift box, and so if you wanted to give this as a gift, this would be a great tool or a, a great way to do that. It's got kind of magnetic edges on the on the box. There comes with a sheet that that talks about care and use and, and sharpening and, and all those kinds of things. So that's cool. Then we also had uh, this little leather strap was on the knife or on the sheath. I don't know if I can get it facing the right way. Ah, okay. So basically 
it was on the sheath like that. And this, this was a, a snap that you could unsnap. And so um, I took that off because I didn't think it was necessary. I actually, I can probably show you that on the other one here a little bit better. So I was going to show you this other knife in another video, but since I already took that off. So see how the, that is, is kind of um, done as an extra retention. You know, and so that's kind of cool if you want that. If you want that on there, then that's that's cool for you. Um, I didn't think that it was necessary for for my particular uses, so I took that off. Um, you also have a couple of adjustments that come for the tech lock, so you can adjust to the right thickness of belt. And then he also has the little Allen wrench tool and a uh, Phillips head screwdriver, so that you can tighten up any screws or anything. And then he gives you a little bit of a black paracord so that you could also make um, so you could also make lanyards. And so that's kind of the presentation box, um, so to speak. And I'll show you this other one. With this other knife, just so you get a better look at what it looks like when it comes to you. So, very nice presentation, very nice packaging, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, this is a 1095 knife over here. Um, but again, we're just looking at the D2 today. Uh, D2 steel has always been a favorite steel of mine. I think it's a great, a great combination. It seems to hold edge very well, and it's not hard to sharpen. And uh, the other thing I don't like, or the other thing I like about it, is that it's easy to clean the blade. Um, with a lot of other finishes and stuff like that, you get the powder coat finish and stuff and different different things. It's just it gets all marked up and it's hard to keep clean looking. Um, this is after having used it, you know, up in the barn and all that, and uh, just wipe it off and it, and it looks great. So pretty cool. Anyhow, um, as far as negatives go I can't really think of a lot um, I really can't uh, you know he, he is coming out with one a design that is a longer length than four inches so for me this this knife fits into kind of the middle you know a uh, long time ago I did a video talking about the three knife system I like to carry, carry a pocket knife a middle knife which is where this one would fit in and, and that's what does like 80 to you know 90 percent of the work right that is these and then uh like a longer knife with a six or seven inch blade so that you can do split wood fires with bigger logs and stuff if you needed to in an emergency um, this will still do split wood fires just fine you're just going to need to have the logs be a couple inches or so in diameter um, and and we do some of that here in the in the video so anyway um you know, just a cool knife and super, super comfortable. So I worked out a deal with him uh, for Reality Survival uh, viewers. If you use the discount code um, REALITYSP, then you will get 15% off. So I thought that was pretty cool. I will put a link uh, down in the description below to where you can find these knives. And, uh, and you can put in that discount code to get, I think it's on Amazon uh, is where he's, where he's got these for sale right now. Um, and his Amazon store has got a lot of other survival gear and stuff. You guys could check that out as well. But I'll put all the links down in the description. Uh, Reality SP to get 15% off. Okay, so with that, let's go ahead and take a look at the footage in the barn. All right, guys, so we're up here in the barn. Uh, we're going to do just a little bit of testing on the D2 version of the um, Holtzman Gorilla Survival Knife. And uh, as you guys saw earlier, this is a, it's a pretty cool knife. It's laid out pretty well. It feels real good in the hand. And so we're just going to cut some stuff, you know. Um, so we'll start out with some paper here. This is straight out of the box. I haven't sharpened it or anything like that. So pretty sharp out of the box. Yeah, there we go. So, you know, it comes with a good edge. Right there, straight away. All right, let's see what's next. We'll kind of just work our way up in difficulty, I guess. So these are just some uh, cloth 
uh, straps, some cloth tie straps. Um, you know, just to, like I said, we'll get more and more difficult as we go, I guess. A few here. So, it's cutting those good and clean. Uh, what's next? Okay, here's some, um, do some 550 cord. problems Do a couple strands cuts right through it I mean this is just the the size and shape of this and the comfort in the hand is is really just that perfect middle size knife you guys know if you've been watching me for a while I kind of recommend carrying three different size knives as as far as like survival and stuff goes and this fits neatly right in the middle you know of that that kind of the one knife that does most you know it's not small enough to do like little tiny, you know, delicate carving and stuff. And it's not big enough to do like, you know, batoning with, you know, huge pieces of four or five inch wood. But it'll do like 80 or 90% of the stuff that you need. It's, it's really a good size. So, um, all right, we did that. Oh, here's, a, here's an old piece of two strand twist 550 cord from when I was in uh, the survival school. I made it back way back then it's old it's been around for 20 years probably let's see yep just cut right through that too all righty let's uh move along here let's see if we can figure out what i'm gonna do <laughs> all right this is just a cedar plank so boom. Yikes! Put some safety glasses on. <laughs> Gets a little closer to your fingers. I want to slow down a little bit. All right, so it made pretty good, easy work of that. Um, go for some little of a finer. finer stuff. Oh yeah. Doing good there too. Okay. save some of this stuff here and we'll try the ferrule rod on that stuff a little bit later. Maybe I'll cut up a little bit more. Oh yeah. Nice fine hair like. And you know I could tell right when I picked it up, but this is confirming everything that I thought. And that is that you're, it's just the palm swell and everything, the, the design of the handle is really nice. Uh, I mean, you're not getting any hard, you know, hard spots or hot spots, you know, where it's kind of putting a lot of pressure or anything like that. So that's kind of cool, man. That's kind of cool. All right, let's do a little twist twist splitting see if you guys can see this you took the tip in there and kind of split it down again this is cedar so it's pretty easy but mostly I'm just wanting to make sure that the tip designs not too delicate you know or anything like that okay Try something a little bigger. Boom. See all those. Tip still looks fine. Didn't have any issues with it. Okay. Let's see here. Keep my pile together. 
Um, next piece, I guess let's go ahead and look at something a little bit bigger. We'll take this, this is a big chunk of um, like fur, um, two by three. We'll just see how it does that. Still a soft wood, but a lot harder than a cedar. And it seems to be chunking that stuff off. No problems. Now, I wish I had trees on my property, but Cheyenne, <laughs> trees don't really grow well in Cheyenne. I try to find you a big piece of knotty wood, but uh, I don't have any out here. But I can tell you it's doing it's doing great. For you know stuff that's a couple inches in diameter, this is going to work just fine. Uh, let's see. I don't remember what I was going to... Oh, I think I was going to drill through this one or whatever. Um, this is, again, just another piece of, uh, of old cedar. And I was thinking I was just going to try to kind of drill down through it. It's pretty soft, this piece of wood is, but... It's like a half inch thick. It might be reminiscent of if you were doing a bushcraft project trying to get like a bow and drill fire started or something, you know. See, yeah, we got through it. You can see that. So. So, not too bad. Uh, what else have we got here? Oh, I forgot some rope. All right, well, now we've been doing this for a little bit. Let's. Uh, Crank it up a little. This is some. Uh, this is some kind of cheap Harbor Freight rope. It's got kind of like a foam core center or something. It's not like an actual climbing rope, so it's a little easier to cut climbing than to cut climbing rope. And I got some of that over there, but it is braided. So let's just uh, boom. Boom, cuts through that, good. All right, let's... This is a piece of actual climbing rope. And... Snap. Look at that. Cut right through that. Actually, it almost feels like it's cutting through it easier than it did the other. That's pretty sweet. Okay, what else we got? Oh, here's some old... Sure. I don't know if I can get through this or not. This is stainless steel uh, antenna cable, <laughs> coaxial cable. Got all messed up. We'll see if I can cut through this. I don't know if it will or not. Boom. Cut right through it. Okay. I wonder if it's still sharp. <clears throat> All right, here's the test, D2. Looking pretty good. Not too bad. Um, what else do I got here that I can that I can chop up for you? Oh, here we go. We'll do a real good test on the tip here. That's an old license plate. <laughs> we'll just go, you know, kind of down through through it. Well, just Okay, went through there just fine. So you had to punch holes in a tin can or something to, you know, the lid or something like that. Looks like it's going to be plenty strong for you. So that's cool. As you can see, it just punched holes right through that. Okay, so I guess let's go ahead and see if the, the um, ferrule rod works. Came comes with a little uh, scraper, as you guys saw probably earlier. And 
and a little ferro rod. So, I'm not sure if you guys know this or not, but when you get a ferro rod, what you're supposed to do is, uh, <laughs> I probably should move that can of gasoline, <clears throat> is you're supposed to scrape off the, uh, the coating that comes in it before you try to, to spark it. And the reason you want to do that is, is it'll light easier. <laughs> they put the required uh, by the postal service, I guess that's who, who requires it, but before it can go through the mail, it has to have this, this thick black coating put on it. So I'm just gonna scrape that off real quick. The scraper actually has a pretty nice sharp edge on all four sides, so that's cool. I'm not trying to spark it right now. I'm just cleaning this off a little bit. Okay, so I think that's probably going to be good enough. I'm just going to break some of this up and make kind of a little pile out of it. It is a little more coarse than what you would probably ideally want in a survival situation. But if I can get this going in here, and it'll definitely work on something that is, you know, more fine and, and all that kind of stuff. So this will be a good test for this. All right. So this is the, uh, it's what they call, or what I call anyway, like the slow burn magnesium. Um, there it got it and what it does is is it puts off bigger bigger chunks and then they kind of as you can see it's getting ready to go here and they kind of flame up a little slower there's different composite materials on these uh, on these ferro rods and so you can see it'll throw good sparks you can you know just throw them out like that but if you get down and get kind of close, get it rested like I was showing you earlier, those get you some really hot little balls that kind of work good for starting a fire. So it's, I don't know if you guys can see that. Can you see it there? It's burning. Oh, yeah, my camera was a little out of frame. <clears throat> um, Got that going there too. So let me try the uh, the back of the knife. And let me try the front of the knife. The back of the knife's not. Nah, it's going. There it goes. The edge of the back of the knife isn't as sharp as the scraper, but it's still sharp enough to do it. See how I get these little balls and they go down there and then they start kind of burning. I think this is similar to the, the Swedish ferro rods. Okay, I'll go get a little shot with the blade here. I know a lot of people don't like to see that, but in an emergency situation, I've done a video on that. It's, uh, it's the right way to go. Now, obviously, if you have a scraper, then you go ahead and use a scraper. Works fine. Pretty cool. Okay. And that's a good, I don't know, 5 sixteenths in diameter, so it's gonna last a good long while. Fits nice and snugly in the uh, ferro rod loop on the okay so that has just been our real quick little test of this beautiful little uh, D2 tool steel knife and uh, I like it. I like it a lot. 
as a matter of fact. Um, I'm going to say it's probably up there in, I don't know, the top two or three knives that I have as far as comfort goes. Um, I mean, I like the I like the uh, the D2 steel. I like the design of the blade and everything like that. Um, but I really like the handle. I don't know if I mentioned that or not. <laughs> but the G2 or, or um, uh, G10 uh, scales on it are just. The, look at the profile on it. Let's see if you can kind of see how it kind of curves out. Got that little palm swell in there. And then also these little little thumb grooves right up here. It really just makes it nice and comfy in the hand. So that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, I think he's done a, I think he's done a really nice job on uh, on putting this thing together and I will tell you that uh, um, you know prior to this you know the, the knife that I like to use as my middle knife probably the most was the Mora Bushcraft Black and I think putting this up against that there's no contest at all like this is way better um, very comfortable, way more durable, way, way, way stronger. Um, so that's that's pretty cool. I mean, that's it's going to be a it's going to be knife that I'm going to carry and use in the field for sure. All right, I looked through the pile and I found a, a little piece of walnut and a big piece of oak. So I'm going to go ahead and do some hardwoods with it too. And this is this is good hardened kiln dry kiln dried stuff. So let's just uh, see if we can chip off a piece here. There we go. Obviously, you don't have the same grain quality and straightness in oak as you do cedar. Plenty strong enough to beat through this kind of stuff. I don't think you'd want to try to do it through, uh, you know, four or five inch logs, but, you know, for campfire size stuff and for you know, lighting the grill or lighting the barbecue pit or, you know, whatever, that's going to work out great. So here's some walnut thinner piece yeah, the grains not helping me out here on this one there we go come on shavings on this. There we go. Making some good hardwood feather sticks. And this is after, you know, all that other abuse that I put it through. So that's good. That's good. Hold a good edge. Very cool. All right, so let's talk a little bit about this sheath real quick. Um, it's just a you know it's your basic Kydex sheath with uh, I think that's I think you call those Chicago screws or something along those lines. Um, it's pretty cool because it's got a little uh, holder for the scraper and a holder for the ferro rod, and they both fit in there quite snugly. They're definitely not going to come out. He does provide a little paracord if you want to put a lanyard on there. I think the best thing to do is to put a little bit of elastic on these uh, ends, a little elastic loop, and then you can just loop it down over the end and it'll secure it. Um, this one just slides in and out. 
but it's got a good positive lock on there as well. And same thing with the with the knife, it clicks in, you know, and holds it pretty good. Now he he sends it with a another loop that goes around here that snaps on as an additional retention uh, device. I don't personally think that's needed. Um, you know, it's this is it's in there good. It's not going to go anywhere really. You know, I mean, um, you gotta you gotta pull it out. It's got a good positive lock. So um, it's got like the I want to say. I don't know if it's a brand name or not, but like a tech lock kind of thing that'll slide over. You can just push that up and it'll come out. You've also got, it comes with a couple of adjustments so you can adjust to the size belt that you have. And it's comfortable on the belt. You know, it's got a nice high ride. As you can see, you know, it's the belt basically is gonna be right here. So that handle's gonna be sticking, you know, right up above your belt. Um, and it's been comfortable just wearing it around here. You know, I liked it, so. Anyhow, um, pretty cool. Pretty cool on the sheath. Pretty cool on the knife. I think it's a good value. Um, uh, right now, I think he's uh, retailing these for about $149. And uh, if you use the discount code Reality Survival, that will save you 15% off. So, you know, check them out if you guys are looking for a good knife. Uh, this is this is kind of in in my view. This is the kind of uh, the middle knife in you know like a three knife system. And it'll do, you know, like 89% of stuff you need to do. You know, it's not going to be real long for, for batoning down through big chunks of firewood out in a wilderness survival situation. But as you can see, it handles two, three inch stuff, no problem. Um, and it's got plenty of blade strength for that. Um, and the D2 just really holds a great edge. I mean, it, it really does. Um, I, got, I got no issues with this thing at all, man. So uh, it's pretty cool. So anyway, I'll have uh, links down in the description below if you guys want to uh, pick one of these up. And I've also got another knife that he's got that is uh, similar to this, but it's a 1095 uh, high carbon steel version. So we'll be looking at that one as well. So anyway, guys, uh, thanks for watching. And as always, we will see you on another video here shortly. Don't forget to live six Ps. Proper prior preparation prevents poor performance. And if you got this knife, there ain't going to be no poor performance. I keep finding stuff that I want to add to the <laughs> to the test as I walk around and stuff. So here's some some, uh, some cardboard. And again, this is at the end of the uh, of the test. So still holding a pretty good edge. Get caught up a little bit here and there, but. Not too bad. D2. It's great steel for a knife, I think. Found something else. <laughs> Go through a water bottle, too. Kind of curious as if to uh, it's all crinkled up and everything. You know you can make cordage out of water bottles. I'm gonna show you guys a video on that one these days. I've been meaning to do that forever. Pretty cool. It'll handle anything. <laughs> Found some more. So this is uh, this is some corrugated plastic and and paper kind of mixed, and um, it's a little different than cardboard. But uh, I figured we'd just cut through some of this too. That's easy. Let's go the opposite way against the grain. See how it does. I have no idea. Boom. I love this knife. That's nice. About some more stuff. <laughs> Sorry, I just keep coming back. Um, yeah, so this is a, this is some old hardened plastic tubing 
It was in an old siphon thing that got it, get, it just got hard over the years. I think I used it once and left the left gasoline sit in it. Now it's all hard and nasty. So let's uh, let's try to cut some of this stuff. See how it does. So, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Go through a couple layers of that. Let's see. Got to hold it tight, goofball. There we go. Let's see if we can go through three of them. <laughs> it did it. All right. I'm not coming back this time. 